Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Becky Megas, and I am the founder and chief care connector for Women in Sustainability. Women in Sust Sustainability is a, an inclusive uh, social and environmental nonprofit that is dedicated to caring for the people that care for the planet through community resources, advocacy, and education to create a sustainable and equitable future with a feminist viewpoint and leadership. Women in Sustainability strives to create a safe space for like-minded and diverse individuals to create purposeful connections and conversations. All are welcome in our community. Um, note that Carolyn needs access to that document, Libby. So if you get a second to get those approved, while I'll go through a couple of housekeeping items. Um, as I noted, we are recording today's session. Um, so if you want to uh, turn your cameras off, we totally understand. You may notice we also have our closed captions turned on. Um, you can toggle those on and off. There is three buttons that say more, and you can either hide or show those subtitles under preference. Um, we ask that you change your pro to add your pronouns. As I noted, we work to be an inclusive organization. And if you can add your pronouns into your name, you can change your name by clicking the three dots over your name and adding in your pronouns, doing this as you feel comfortable. Um, you can also change your views throughout the um, conversation. So you can go into um, the top right hand corner, click view, you have your speaker and gallery, there will be a presentation they'll be using and you can do a side by side view as well, which is really helpful. Um, open up your chat and say hello if you haven't yet, we'll be utilizing that chat throughout. Um, so just have that handy and ready to go. You can also ask questions throughout the presentation in that chat. And you may have an opportunity to unmute at the end. In the meantime, we do ask you to stay on mute during the presentation just so we don't have any interference with our speakers. Um, when we get to the question and answer portion, as I noted, you can mention that in the chat. Um, we also ask if, if we get to the, uh, the opportunity to unmute, if you use your action reaction icons down at the bottom, again, clicking on more if they don't show, clicking on your reactions and using that hand raise feature, and we'll call on you to ask that question. Um, or you can also send it to me in a direct chat if that is helpful as well. Also, throughout the presentation, we love to support our speakers. We know that this virtual space is still a really odd, weird space to present in. So if your cameras are on, we ask you to click your fingers or clap your hands if you hear something you like. If your cameras are off, again, using those reaction buttons to show a little bit of love for our speakers today. Um, that just helps give it a little bit of live energy to this space. Um, what else? Oh, if you hear something you like from your speakers, also feel free to go ahead and post that in the chat as well and repeat it. Utilize that chat throughout. Just be sure to stay to today's topic on zero waste um, and share the space. We are all here to learn today. So be kind and courteous and share the space as you make take space and make space for everybody. That's all. I'm now going to turn it over to Carrie and Libby to get started talking about zero waste um, so that we can all become a little bit more experienced and make it a little bit easier to go out and create a zero waste space for all of us. Um, so well, please help me welcome our speakers today, Carrie Martin Haley and Libby Bloom. Hi, everybody. We are so excited to be here. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen real quick so we can get our presentation going. All right, can everybody see that? All right, awesome. Well, welcome you guys. Um, we're really excited to share this guide to zero waste with everybody. It looks like we have a whole variety of um, different um, experience levels and comfortability levels. So we're really excited to chat with everybody. Um, my name is Carrie Martin Haley. And my name is Libby Bloom, and I do just want to mention one thing before we get started about the workbook. Sorry, Carrie. Um, I know somebody said it, that they need access. If you go ahead and just request access, I will grant you access. Um, that's right now the way that we are doing it. So <laughs> I appreciate your <laughs> uh, patience with that, but go ahead and just request access and then I will allow you in. Um, yeah, go ahead, Carrie. Sounds good. All right. So a little bit of introductions about us. Um, I can have you start, Libby. 
Yeah. So like I said, my name is Libby. I am a dietitian and I am the founder of the Crooked Carrot, which is a private nutrition practice that's really just helping people create a more peaceful relationship with food, uh, find movement they enjoy. And my primary focus is to help people find ways to nourish themselves in a way that also supports a healthy planet. That's one of my passions, nourishing people and nourishing the planet. Awesome. Um, and as I stated, I am Carrie Barton Haney. I am with Summit Sustainable Goods. Um, I founded um, my little zero waste shop back in 2020 at the very beginning of the pandemic. Um, so we are a little zero waste shop serving Colorado and beyond. We sell eco-friendly and plastic-free household and personal care goods, including refills um, online and then through local pop-ups around town. Uh, all right. So oh, a little bit of additional housekeeping. We will be asking you guys to interact. Um, when we have questions that are open for discussion, you all are more than welcome to unmute yourselves and we can chat, or if it's more comfortable, you can throw your comments into the chat box and we can do it that way. Um, and then as well, um, just making sure that everybody has access to that workbook because um, that's a great way to kind of catch some of the um, the thoughts that we have throughout as we go through. We want to make sure that you leave with some actionable next steps for continuing or starting your zero waste journey. So if there are any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat box. Um, but I think we can go ahead and get started. Awesome. Okay, so we did this a little bit at the beginning, but I would love to touch base with all of you. Go ahead and put in the chat what your comfort level is with zero waste. So it could range anywhere from I know basically nothing to I know a little bit to I have a lot to learn or I'm an expert. Um, just go ahead and drop in the comments kind of where you're at. Right, so we have a little bit, we have kind of an intermediate, a couple of those, <laughs> intermediate maybe, <laughs> definitely. Awesome. Go you do well in this area. Perfect. Yeah, thanks for that. So first of all, what is zero waste? Um, there are many different definitions of zero waste you know, different interpretations of it, different explanations from simply diverting waste by recycling or composting to not producing any waste, which in our current system is pretty much impossible. Um, some people view zero waste as an act, while other people feel it's more of a mentality. So there's a lot of different viewpoints on it. And the way that we like to focus on it is more about practice and progress not perfection. Uh, so you can see on the slide here, we have practicing lifestyle choices that create less landfill. That's kind of the way that we like to think about it. And we really believe in figuring out what works for you and making small changes to help you reach those goals, whatever that may look like for your life. So whether your goal is to reduce, you know, one plastic bag of trash in a year or to fit all of your trash in a mason jar, we're just glad that you're here and glad that you are interested in maybe learning a little bit more about this space. All right, um, so we'll start out by doing a really brief overview of something that we call the three R's or the five R's, sorry, of zero waste. So everybody's for the most part heard of the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, this system takes it a little bit farther. And what it does is it works from the top bottom. So um, we start with uh, refusing, which is that first one up there at the top. So what can you refuse out of your daily life that you don't need? Um, and then we move on to reduce, which is just reducing your daily day-to-day -day consumption, um, something that we've heard about for quite a while. We're using what you can. A lot of people are getting more comfortable with things like reusable bags, um, all of those little simple switches to help us reuse. Um, then we move into recycle. So recycling um, either curbside or we'll talk about different alternative methods to recycle as well that are really unique um, and available to a lot of folks here in Denver and, uh, and beyond. Um, and then the last one is composting or rot, um, what you can safely put back into the ground. 
Um, and really the step with these is to start with that first one, refusing, and then if you can't refuse, you move down, you move down, and you move down. Um, that makes sure that we are keeping as much as we can um, from our landfills and putting them into the proper channels. So we'll go into these a little bit more in depth as we move forward. Awesome. Okay, so the first R that we're going to talk about is, like Carrie said, refuse. Um, this is the first R for a reason. So this is about preventing waste from being produced in the first place. Um, it's kind of about saying no to the things that you don't need or things that are just going to go to waste basically right away. Um, there are a lot of different ways to look at this. So it could be something like buying uh, loose greens instead of packaged ones or buying from the bulk bins where you don't have that packaging. Um, it could be bringing your own coffee mug instead of getting the disposable one or like probably a lot of you have heard, you know, asking for no straw. This one, it can take a little bit of practice because we are so conditioned to say yes say yes to swag bags and business cards and things that are just given to us, whether we want them or not. Uh, but the mantra for this first R is really accept what you need and refuse the rest. And I think one thing that's really important about this is to remember that refusing doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go without or that you have to deprive yourself. It could just mean uh, for example, choosing a different product, maybe something has different packaging or it's produced in a different way, um, or it could be going about something in a different way, like taking the picture of a flyer or business card instead of accepting the, the, you know, the actual piece of paper. So what I would love to hear from you in the chat, I would love for you guys to uh, maybe brainstorm a little bit. What ideas do you have for implementing this first R. And there's also a spot in the workbook where you can kind of jot some other ideas down, but we would love to hear a little bit more about what you all think. Yes. Using what you have, that's such a good idea. There are a lot of, uh, you know, sustainable, quote unquote, sustainable things that you can purchase, but the most sustainable thing you can use is something that you already have. So I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, refusing snacks and drinks on the plane, for sure. Bring in your own if you have that ability. I'll give, uh, give an example of something I'm trying to remember to do more regularly is bringing my own containers um, when I go out to eat um, so that I can put my leftovers in there rather than asking for a single use thing. Holy cow, you guys, that's really hard. <laughs> I think I've done it like twice and it's the step. It's kind of like when you first start transitioning to um, reusing your own bags rather than taking one from the store and it's you know, the first step is getting the containers into your car and then remembering that you have them when you're at the restaurant. And um, that's definitely something I'm working on right now. That's a tough one for sure. Just Eve, I think the, the act of remembering it is probably the hardest part for a lot of these things. <laughs> um, somebody said that we started to do that with movie theaters. So like bringing your own snacks, is that what you mean? That's a really good idea. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And there are lots of different ways that you can go about this. There's not, you know, one specific thing that you have to do. Um, but I, yeah, let's see what else. Bringing a small towel instead of using paper towels. Yes. Brought your own bags. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we do have some ideas as well. We wanted to kind of get your uh, wheels turning, but here are some additional ones. I think we've talked about most of these. Um, removing your name from mailing lists. I don't know if you all know that you can do that or how to do that, uh, but that is absolutely a good one. So you don't, it's kind of nice because you don't get all the junk mail and it helps reduce waste. Um, declining the grocery bag. Yeah, so we talked about most of these. Carrie, do you have any other ones to add? Um, I think you guys are coming up with some really great ones in the chat. That's awesome. 
Um, I don't think I have anything to add at the moment, but the great thing about this is that these kind of conversations just get your mind working, right? And when you come up with something that works really well, jot it down. Um, and that's how we make those small steps. Yeah, so one of the questions was, how do you remove uh, your name from mailing lists? Uh, there are a couple different websites that you can go to. I don't remember what they are off the top of my head. Maybe Kira, you do, um, but you can go in and uh, request to have your name removed. Uh, it's a, I, I have the resources, just not right here. Uh, I can send it over to Becky and maybe she can send it out to you guys for how to do that. And I did it and it absolutely worked. I don't get nearly as much junk mail as I used to. So, oh yeah, add it to the workbook. Yeah. I'll write myself a note and I'll add that so you guys can see it. Great. Um, any other final thoughts on Refuse before we move on? Cool. All right. So the next one is reducing. Um, so if you can't refuse, your next step is to reduce your day-to-day -day consumption. So this would be things that you don't necessarily use. Um, one of my favorite um, examples of this is fast fashion. So we know that fast fashion is a huge issue right now in terms of environmentalism and sustainability. Um, typically every three to five, um, three out of five items that is made for fast fashion, which means it's really not designed to be worn more than a handful of times, ends up in landfill within like a year or something, um, and then just clogs up our system. So one of the ways to reduce would be things like just buy fewer pieces of clothing. Um, when you have to buy clothing, um, choose from sustainable suppliers or go secondhand, um, or just use what you have on hand. I know I still have pieces from like when I was in high school, <laughs> um, but they still fit and they still work. So um, if, if you can find ways to start reducing things like that, um, just on a daily basis, little by little, that helps a lot. Um, so similar to what we did last time, does anybody else have any great ideas of how either things that you've done to reduce um, your either product or usage in your home or, um, or things that you would like to kind of focus in on in terms of that reducing? I'm so glad somebody else says they have clothes from high school because sometimes that's an awkward statement to throw out there. <laughs> that's a great idea growing produce in the garden, so reducing what you're bringing in from external sources. That also, I think, I think re reducing a lot of times can be one of those really empowering steps of the five R's, um, where it makes you really think about how you're, um, you know, living on an everyday basis and what you can do to just use what you have around you. Awesome, any other ideas? Yeah, that's a great one. Um, the little like bite toothpaste um, tabs. Yeah, those are fabulous. Um, one other way and, and reducing can be, as Libby said in the last one, it can be as simple as just reducing the, the packaging necessary in the products that you do purchase. One of the things that I am always trying to do, it's a, it's a never ending, you know, there's not like a point where you go, okay, I'm done with this, uh, is reducing food waste and just trying to use up all the little, you know, bits and bobs in my fridge. So I often do like, um, like pasta salads or frittatas to like use up anything. So I don't end up throwing that food away that at one point was good. That's a great idea. Yes. Uh, refill shops are fabulous for helping to reduce, um, the kind of packaging you need. Um, yeah, uh, definitely. I'll, I'll talk about this later, but Food is kind of my next step for um, tackling my own waste in my household. Um, that definitely can be can be challenging. <laughs> I love the term Frankenstein meals. I don't know if I've heard that before. That's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> See, we're already doing it, guys. All right. 
Um, so we'll go ahead and throw up onto the screen some of the ideas that we had brainstormed. Um, and then just with the previous ones, feel free to add anything to that workbook, um, jot any notes down, anything that resonates with you personally and your lifestyle. So some ideas can be implementing a time frame um, that you wait before buying something that helps to reduce the amount you're bringing into your household. So when I have a big purchase that I want to make, um, I try to hold off for a month or more to see if I really actually need it. And a lot of times it's like, oh, well, that's not really, I'm still living my life. And, you know, it helps with that in, impulse purchases. Um, challenging yourself to a no buy month. Um, I've heard of people who have managed to do that for a full year, and I think it's very admirable. Um, if it's in your budget, invest in higher quality items that are going to last longer. So a little bit um, of that fast fashion idea, making sure that we're purchasing better quality things so that they don't end up in landfill within six months or a year. Um, opting for items packaged in recyclable containers. We talked about that. A couple of you mentioned that. Um, same thing, uh, swapping out packages um, or package items for unpackaged things. Um, refill stores are a great example of that. Um, dried goods would be a similar idea. Uh, leftovers, um, you all mentioned. I still love the idea of the Frankenstein meals. That's awesome. Um, printing on both sides of the paper, um, reducing the amount of paper that you bring into your, or that, that you're using. Um, <laughs> sticking to your grocery list when shopping. I'm really bad at that. <laughs> that's what I'm working on. Don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry. That's what I've learned. Oh my gosh. Um, all right, so we'll leave this up for just a couple seconds. Um, if anybody has any other thoughts or anything else they want to share, feel free to throw in the, in the chat and then we will move on to the next bar. And one thing I just want to reiterate we, that we mentioned at the beginning that we really like to focus on the progress and not perfection. So this is absolutely really difficult. Some of these things may not seem realistic in your life right now. And that's absolutely fine. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. So even if you're trying to do something, if sometimes you're not able to do that, you know, not beating yourself up about it, this is the world that we live in. So yeah, it absolutely can be hard and it doesn't have to be, you know, all or nothing. Yeah, absolutely. All right, moving on to reuse. All right. So reuse is, I think, one of my favorite ones because it makes me be more creative. <laughs> At least I find that for myself. Um, but whether you are deciding if you're if you want to toss something out or buy something new, I really would encourage you to ask yourself if there is a way that you could reuse it, repair it or repurpose it in some way. And this can apply to so many different things. Um, clothing, furniture, technology, household items. You know, for example, if your if your phone is broken, is there instead of immediately going to just buy a new one, is there a way that you can repair it? Is it repairable? Sometimes they're not, but sometimes they are. Um, so see if that's the case for you. Or uh, reusable items. We've talked about that quite a few times here. Some of the R's do kind of overlap. Um, but using your reusable items, your water bottles, your coffee mugs. Uh, somebody mentioned the silverware that they have in their drawer in the kitchen. That's awesome. Reusing some of those things and then repurposing into something new. So for example, if I do, we talked about junk mail. If I do get a piece of junk mail and it's in an envelope, instead of just tossing the envelope, uh, I'll use it as a, as a place to write my grocery list. And then I will toss it. You know, it's, if there is a way that we can reuse it or repurpose it in some way, you know, see if that's doable in your life. Um, this, this reuse can also encompass uh, selling or donating items, buying, you know, furniture secondhand, clothing secondhand, seeing if there's a new, um, a new way to look at it, you know, giving your old couch a new loving home instead of it going to landfill. Um, so yeah, buying secondhand uh, clothing stores, like thrift shops. Uh, this could also be purchasing refurbished technology or secondhand technology uh, from a budget perspective. That can be really helpful. Uh, I've done that with almost all of my technology, phones, computers, you know, external keyboards and all of the things that we need, you know, working from home, uh, buying those things secondhand 
is really good for the planet and also for your budget. Um, but yeah, so what are some ideas that you guys have for reusing, repairing, repurposing? Oh, I love that. That's super smart. Using a CD, an old CD tower as a shelf in the kitchen. I love that. Oh my Such gosh. a good one. <laughs> yeah, that, see, you have to get creative with this one. <laughs> what else uh, are you, what other things can you think of that would fit into this reuse, repair, repurpose category? You know, I have a pair of leggings that I think I have sewn up like three or four times now because they're so comfy and I can't let them go. And they're just lounge pants at this point, but I, I keep sewing them up. <laughs> it can be really rewarding to do that too, to repair something. Yeah. I have a jacket that the seam is coming off on the, uh, on the wrist and I just kind of sewed it up and it it doesn't look as good, but it still it still functions. I yes. did that one two weeks ago with this. It was very yes. exciting. I was really proud of myself. <laughs> yeah, so selling things on places like Poshmark, Depop, um, ThreadUp, or some other ones that where you can purchase and or sell. Got a pair of boots fixed. Oh yeah, using those jars. Jars are so versatile. Yep, that house different food items. Even things like jam jars that you get from the grocery store. They are great jars to use for like leftovers or gifts. Mm. Uh, Becky, is that applying to specific um, like appliances? Is that what that one is around? Yeah, yeah electronics. That's perfect. That's awesome. That would, that go ahead. They haven't been able to get it to pass, but they know they keep trying. Yeah, that would be great. I had a computer that broke and I br brought it to get repaired and they told me it was not repairable because of the way they designed it. So I had to get a, a new to me computer. It was really frustrating. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love the idea yep. of turning things into to dog toys when they get too tired. We have an old comforter that we just gave to our dog and she now sleeps on it because it was so ripped, we weren't gonna be able to donate it anywhere. So it's now hers. <laughs> yeah, that one's good. And you also, if you play tennis or have old tennis balls, you also can donate them to like dog shelters and they, they love them. <laughs> Same thing for towels or blankets or mm -hmm. sheets, anything like that patches. Sometimes the holes, you just can't sew them up. So a patch is a really great idea. Yes. Yeah, sandbox toys, kitchen bowls, measuring cups, make great sandbox toys. That's a very good idea. Yeah, this is awesome. You guys have so many good ideas. Oh, one other one that I want to mention is technically utilizing your local library is a great way to encompass this R. So if you have access to that, that is also a great idea. I love that. We actually got a couple DVDs a few weeks back from our local library. And it's been kind of fun to break out DVDs again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> and uh, I don't, I don't know if, you know, if people like to read actual books, or if you do have like a Kindle, you can borrow Kindle books or ebooks as well. So yeah, it does definitely go for more than just regular books. Mm -hmm. I've got mine right here. It's been, I think it's five years old now. And I basically exclusively read things from the library on here. It's awesome. You get a library card and then you have access to all of their eBooks and their audiobooks. Yeah. So, and you don't have to buy recommend. them or pay for them. Agreed. I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. All, all right. right. Let's yeah, go ahead and pull up what we have here. So you guys came up with so many good ideas. Let's see if we missed anything. Uh, reusing jam or pasta jars, donating, purchasing secondhand, repairing items, uh, reusing plastic bags. Yeah. So one thing is you've probably heard this, but it's only single use if you only use it one time. So even things like plastic bags, reusing them, if you get them, you know, use them for something else. Um, 
opting for rechargeable batteries and refillable ink cartridges. If that's an option for you, that's a great idea. Um, saving wrapping paper, if you do receive gifts and they come wrapped in wrapping paper, you know, maybe not for a child, but for adults, for us, we can unwrap them nicely and, you know, fold up the wrapping paper to reuse again. This is also really great for things like bows and ribbon. You can reuse those again. Um, yeah, reusing the produce bags. You can do that with the bulk bags too. If you do get the ones from the store, you can reuse them the next time you go. Um, another one that we didn't mention here or that is here, but we didn't mention it is looking for multi-purpose items. So like specifically cleaning products, things that have a lot of different uses that you can use in a lot of different places, things like vinegar, baking soda, Castile soap. You could use them basically everywhere in your house and they, they're they a great cleaner for all the different areas. <laughs> yes, keeping them and then reusing them. Yeah, like people, you know, for cat litter and ice bags, I love that. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Yeah, using our reusable coffee filters, tea strainers, coffee cups, all of those types of things that you've probably heard. Um, but yeah, you guys have some great ideas. Any other ideas coming up? All so right. go ahead and um, just like before, you can write them down in your workbook or type them in your workbook, just so you can remember some of the things that might work well in your life and for you. That way you can remember them later on. All right, we will go ahead and transition to the next one, which is probably the most famous of the five R's, which is recycling. We've heard so much about recycling in the past several years. It's been something that's really been pushed, especially here in Denver. Um, and there are some important conversations to kind of have around this concept of recycling. Um, so first of all, recycling is a fabulous opportunity for a lot of people. Um, for some, it's not entirely free, so it's important for us to mention the, the privileges we have to be able to have access to things like this um, if, if we can. Um, so many of us are most familiar with the curbside recycling. I know at least here in Denver, we don't even need to separate out our recyclables recyclables anymore. We just throw it all in one bin and they take it and recycle it, um, sift it out when, when it's at the recycling center. Um, but there are a lot of other ways that we can recycle as well. There are a lot of companies that are coming out and doing some really cool things. So um, Rigwell is one that comes to mind that has just um, come into Denver that will take hard to recycle items. Um, Happy Beetle is another one that I've heard of in the Denver area. Um, and all of those help with some of the things that, that can be recycled, we just don't know how to do any of it. Um, so things like batteries and light bulbs and electronics and even clothing um, that rather than throwing into landfill, um, a lot of these companies will have programs that uh, will pick up from your house once a week or once a month um, with any of those little items here and there, and then they're the ones that take care of that. So that's a really awesome opportunity. Um, there are also some big misconceptions around recycling that tend to get a little bit tricky. So for example, um, how many of you guys knew that not a lot of plastic is actually recycled? Uh, you can put it in the recycling bin, but unfortunately there's just not the consumer market out there for um, for there to be the kind of recycling of plastics that is um, necessary. Yeah, Becky, for, for all of the plastic that we create. Um, and that's why it's so far down on this list. So if we can refuse and reuse and, and reuse and reduce what we can, by the time we get to recycle, well, then we're only putting a minimal amount of that plastic into the recycling bin. And we're gonna hope that some of it gets recycled. Um, another big one that I know I was a big um, participant of until I learned better probably in college was that um, things like grocery bags. So the, the bag of bags, Carolyn, that you're talking about, um, that 
as we know, actually cannot be recycled with regular recyclables in your curbside recycling. And it's not something that everybody who tries to recycle knows. Um, it can clog up the system. Um, it can make it more dangerous for folks who are working at the recycling centers, trying to pull everything off the line that cannot be recycled. Um, however, you can bring your bag of bags. I did this just last week. Um, take it into like Target or King Supers, somewhere with an in-store drop-off, as long as all of the plastic is, um, you know, dry and clean, um, you can just dump it in there and um, they take care of it. Um, same thing, we're not entirely sure how much of it gets recycled, um, but it's one thing to do, to do the best we can so that it um, doesn't all end up into, you know, in our landfill. Um, so, and then we also have um, some really great opportunities in um, in the Denver area, at least I know the Alliance Center takes a ton of hard to recycle items. They're based in, um, in downtown Denver, about a block away from Union Station. Um, they have a whole hard to recycle station. You can bring stuff in and just sift it out. Um, that's a great option. Um, and yes, so living in an apartment gets to be really tricky. I have a friend who's trying to convince her condo complex um, that just went up to start recycling and they're refusing it right now. So I, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the hard thing. There are some options that are starting to come out there for recycling that um, they'll actually come to your door and take your recycling directly rather than it being like the whole facility that'll do it. Um, Obviously, it's it's not as good as having it available to the whole complex, but um, I know, for example, next use composting, um, they also have recycling options, um, and they're based up in like Westminster, Arvada, Thornton area, and I think North Denver as well. Um, so they actually can can recycle at places like apartment complexes. So it might be worth a quick Google search to see if there are any options out there for you. Um, there are also places you can drop off recycling. Um, Compost Colorado is another great one. Yeah. Um, so lots of lots of smaller companies that are starting to help fill some of those gaps that we're seeing in the system. Um, and I think it's just going to take the research um, to see what's available in your area. And then if you see something that you really like and you want a company to, to fill your area, reach out to them. Um, I know that's a really great way to get companies really excited about expanding and providing more opportunities to everybody. Yeah, um, yeah, so definitely Thornton. So next use compost um, and recycling um, does service Thornton. So that, that might be a great option for you. Um, cool, so um, before we do anything else, um, any other thoughts, any other questions or comments, and then we'll throw up some of the other ideas that we had onto the screen. Um, Gosh, so the the trick that I've heard with determining whether plastic bags can be recycled at in-store drop-offs or it has the plastic has to be able to bubble a little bit. And oftentimes it'll say in the packaging like the plastic film is recyclable. If it's not, sometimes TerraCycle can take items like that or places like Ridwell. Um, uh, I know Ridwell can take um, like the the plastic kind of film stuff that you get inside of a cereal box. Um, yeah, so it's it's gotta be stretchy. Otherwise, unfortunately, it, it's gotta go in that trash can. Um, and that's part of, part of another one of those conversation topics that we really like to run, remind people of is, you know, our system is not perfect and we are working within the confines that we are capable of right now. And that's okay. Um, all of the little steps that we can do along the way and any kind of positive promoting we can do of, uh, companies to switch away from plastics that are not recyclable and preferably, you know, swap away from plastic altogether. Um, but in the meantime, we're doing what we can. Um, and that's okay. That's partly why we have this, all of these different steps. If this is something you just cannot access right now, that's okay. Um, you know, it's, it's part of the, part of the system change that we're working towards. All right. Um, some other thoughts um, in terms of other things that can or cannot be recycled. Um, it often depends on where you live. I know in Denver, it's plastics one through seven, as well as um, a whole bunch of other materials. They have a really comprehensive 
um, list of what can and cannot be recycled on their website. I have used it multiple times before. It takes a quick Google search. Um, definitely worth your time if you have a couple minutes and you're wondering if something can be recycled or not. Um, I tend to use the, um, the phrase, when in doubt, throw it out because our recycling systems are pretty overwhelmed right now. And especially if we're throwing stuff in there that we're not entirely sure, um, it can be really unsafe for folks who are working to try to clean out all of the recycling lines. So when it comes through, it gets on this giant conveyor belt and people actually stand there and pull out everything that can't be recycled. They've seen stuff like garden hoses and um, razor blades, things that are not necessarily safe to be having your hands in. So we just wanna make sure that um, if you're not entirely sure that something can be recycled or it might clog up the machine, it's also okay to throw it in landfill. Um, it's better to do that than to potentially, um, you know, harm somebody or harm the, the machinery that's working to, to help us with that recycling. Um, so we already talked about TerraCycle, we just talked about um, plastic film. Um, oh my gosh, shoot, that's a bummer. I'm sorry to hear about next use, that's really sad. Hmm. Well, all of those little things, um, if, if we can keep kind of an ear to the ground for other organizations as they come up and try to support them if we have the, the ability to, um, just something to kind of keep in mind there. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and jot any ideas down um, in your workbook as we move on to our final R. All right, our final R here is rot or compost. Uh, what is safe to do so? So composting is the natural process of recycling organic matter, things like leaves, food scraps, sticks, basically this organic matter, anything that you know, your dry leaves from the fall, your weeds, anything like that. Uh, we are recycling that organic matter into a valuable fertilizer, essentially a soil amendment that can enrich soil and plants. Uh, now, we've talked a little bit about the, the sequence of the R's and Carrie mentioned how recycling is lower down on the list. Uh, because of the reasons that we talked about, you know, we want to try to reduce, reuse, refuse first so that we are left with as little as possible. Same here. So a lot of people, uh, from what I have heard, they, when I, when we talk about zero waste and sustainability, I hear a lot of times people say, oh yeah, I compost and don't get me wrong. It's great. Composting is amazing. We, we need to do it, uh, if we're able to, and it's the last one for a reason. Um, so the reason that it is the last is simply because we don't want to waste all of the resources that it took to get us to this place. You know, if, if we're growing something, we don't want to waste the resources that went into growing that. Uh, we want to use them if we can. So uh, as far as composting, a lot of times I hear people say like, I don't, I don't have time to compost. And if that's true for you, that's fair, I, understandable. But there are a lot of different ways that we can compost or that you may be able to compost um, depending on what your situation looks like. Um, so yes, Carolyn's talking about vermiculture or uh, vermicomposting, which is composting with worms. Um, we can maybe touch on some local resources or maybe um, brainstorm a little bit after, but uh, vermicomposting is really great if you're in a small space. So think about apartments or if you don't have a yard, um, you really only need a small, you know, small area in order to do vermicomposting. Um, I know it sounds a little bit kind of weird at first. You're like, I don't know if I want worms in my apartment, but <laughs> uh, it can be a really great way to um, be able to compost some of those food scraps that you might otherwise toss in the trash. Um, if you do have a backyard, a backyard compost is a great way to compost. It allows you to uh, kind of take some of those scraps, the leaves, the uh, weeds, anything like that, and turn it into something that you can use for your garden. Um, otherwise, if those are not options for you, if you don't you know, aren't able to do those things. Um, there are also compost drop-off sites, pickup services that may or may not be available in your area. Um, I know that in Denver, there is a place that you can drop off 
your compost. Depending on where you live, you may also have access to uh, the Denver composting service. If you live in a house in that area, you may be able to opt into that. Um, otherwise, I know when I lived in an apartment there, I took my compost and dropped it off. Um, then that was it's a little bit more of a hassle to do so, but it allows you to compost. So, you know, kind of seeing what's available in your area. Um, one thing to note about if you are dropping it off, uh, you can keep it in the freezer, keep your food scraps in the freezer until you're ready to drop them off. That way there's no smell. Um, you don't have to worry about anything like that. Uh, so you can just put all your food scraps in there, depending on what they take. Um, sometimes they don't take meat or dairy. Sometimes they do. So just research uh, look into what they do take, and then you can uh, gather all of those things and then drop them off or have them picked up if that's available to you. Um, there are some places that accept compostable uh, packaging. So if you have plates or silverware or things like that that are that do say compostable, um, sometimes they take them, sometimes they don't. So just kind of make sure with whatever service you're using that those are accepted in that area. Uh, I'm curious, uh, do any of you compost? Do you have access to that? What does that look like as far as kind of the rot in your life? I can share a couple of resources that I've used in the past. Um, so my partner and I are actually in the middle of moving right now. Um, <laughs> so up until yesterday, we were with Scraps, um, which is a composting company available in Denver. Um, and we're moving down to the Greenwood Village area, and unfortunately, Scraps does not service that area, so we called around and figured out who um, services area, and we have the option of either going with Compost Colorado, which I know was mentioned earlier in the chat, um, or Wompost, um, which is another um, composting service that just expanded um, out to Greenwood Village. Um, and they actually, uh, when we went on their website, they had a whole list of places that they were wanting to expand to next. So just another reason to reach out to people if you were interested in having a doorstep composting service. Um, that I know I've heard really good things about the Denver composting service as well. Um, and I have a couple of friends who have tried the Verma composting and, um, and really like it. They say it's really cool. Um, and if you are wanting to learn more about backyard composting and or vermicomposting, Denver Urban Gardens is a really great resource if you're in the Denver area, or if not, their website is also awesome. Um, I'm a Denver master composter and they have so many resources. And so they even offer, I guess I'm not sure as of COVID, you know, what this looks like, but they did offer classes where you could learn about how to start, how to get started with both backyard and vermicomposting. So if you are interested, take advantage. They have some great resources. A couple of people have talked about the Lomi. Um, that could be a great option if that's available to you. Uh, I would love to try it. So if you guys have tried it and love it, let me know. <laughs> um, so we have a couple of resources here on the screen. Also, the last one I didn't mention was a Bokashi bin. Um, this is essentially where you have a bin and you have an activator that you kind of sprinkle over it or add to it that speeds up the composting process. Um, that could also be another option, great for small spaces if you don't have a yard. Awesome. All right. So next we want to move on to more of the, the actual structured piece of it where we're going to ask you to do some work around goal setting. Um, so we're going to start by talking about practices and products real quick. So I like to, to think of um, zero waste steps in terms of both products and practices. So products can be things like anything we've talked about um, from clothing to the food you bring into your house to the products you use in your bathroom or your kitchen on an everyday basis um, to your cleaning products, all those types of things um, or practices, um, which would be, you know, bringing your reusable um, bags to the store, bringing your reusable containers um, when you go out to eat. Um, composting, all of those different practices that help create the behaviors that help us lead to zero waste. So some examples of those guys look like things that we've already talked about. Um, so products that don't use plastics, um, non-recyclable elements, um, bulk foods, um, produce without packaging, um, making sure we're choosing cleaner ingredients that are better um, for the environment than really chemical heavy products. Um, and then only purchasing products that we really need. 
Um, and then the practicing, so composting, um, creating a hard to recycle station in your house so that you can organize out um, the kind of things that then you can decide later um, and do the research and figure out where it needs to go. Um, so all of these little simple product switches. And I like to think of this as one at a time, we're gonna take one product and one practice and we're gonna think about how are we gonna implement this into our lives and start just step by step. Um, so it's really directed specifically towards what you need in your life. Oh, Libby, I think you're on mute. Thanks. <laughs> um, the last thing that we have here is making sure that you all leave with some type of action. So we would love for you to set a goal, just like Carrie mentioned, uh, if you wanna start with a product and a practice, just one of each, maybe just one in general, but one thing that you can focus on that you would like to start working toward. Um, like we said, practice or product or one of each. And I encourage you to set a SMART goal. Uh, probably most of you have heard about a SMART goal and the, the acronym, we want it to be specific, measurable, attainable and achievable, realistic slash relevant and time bound. So this is really just a way to, to help you set up uh, a goal that, that you feel like you can stick with, something that you can work toward and setting it up in a way that makes sense for you. I want you to consider in this moment, what comes naturally to you when you're trying to think of, well, what should I work on? What comes naturally to you? What do you have access to? And what feels relatively easy to implement in your life right now? And don't worry about, you know, years down or months down, what can we do right now? What makes the most sense for you at this current time? And pick one, maybe to three things, one to three things at the most that you would like to start working on. And we would love for you to put that in the chat. What was the one thing that you would like to start? And there's also a spot in the workbook for you to continue this process and to brainstorm a little bit more and write those goals down. Elizabeth, I see that you have a compost bin. You want to you know, get that working well for you. Uh, I encourage you to think about what barriers are in the way, you know, what's not working well around it. How can we, uh, how can we work to make that work in your life? How can we work to make that work in your life? What does that look like? Uh, and if you have family members, how can we set it up in a way that uh, makes sense for you? Let's see Taryn package free produce, lean into the garden, the farmer's market. Yes. Buying in bulk, bring your own containers. Yes. I love that. Those are all great ways to make that happen. One of the more general goals that my partner and I have is to um, reduce the amount of trash that we're throwing out every single year. So looking at, at from more of a global scale. So last year, I think we threw out something like 13 trash bags. Um, so our goal is to get under that uh, this year, even with a move. So we'll see. <laughs> Bringing your own containers. Yeah, that one's what I'm working on too. <laughs> Buying I'm gonna do mm -hmm. no spend month too. Yes. These are great. All right. Well, we're, um, we have just a couple minutes left, so we'd love to wrap up, but um, feel free. We'll have our contact information in the next couple slides. So feel free to reach out with any other questions or any other thoughts that you guys have. Um, thanks so much for all of the participating. This has been really fun to see all your thoughts. Yeah, this is so great. Thank you so much, Carrie and Libby. Um, if anybody wants to stay a couple extra minutes, we can stay in a couple extra minutes to answer some questions. Um, thank you everybody for being here and joining us today and for dealing with a little bit of our tech issues at the beginning. We appreciate that. And you can always see our upcoming events at womeninsustainability.org. If you have a couple questions and have time to stay on, drop those in the chat. Um, I do have a Women in Sustainability final question for both of you. 
Um, what do you hope and or see for the future, particularly focusing in on zero waste? Oh, that's a, a tough question. Um, if you have something, Carrie, go for it. I want to collect my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, so, so what, what do we want or expect to see for zero waste? Um, you know, I think one of the things I'm really excited about is seeing the amount of um, zero waste stores that we're seeing popping up. Um, so I've been really excited that since I launched um, my little business in 2020, I've been hearing of others that are popping up around the area. Um, I think that's gonna give access so much more easily. And then any of this kind of education um, surrounding zero waste is gonna help kind of start shifting that mentality. Um, and then, you know, we're seeing even bigger companies um, start to jump on board. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard of um, companies like Grove. Um, that can deliver straight to you and that have either refillable things or, um, you know, products that don't have any plastic at all. Um, I think all of those things are really going to help shift our mindset as a society to lowering our waste. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful about it. I think we've got a really great um, amount of the population who's getting really excited about this new kind of lifestyle and how we're um, approaching just thinking about our daily lives um, and how much landfill that we're creating. So I'm excited about it. I think the thing that I am most excited to start that's starting to come around is the idea of not being perfect with it. I think when zero waste first started on the, on the, in the realm, it was so much of perfection and making sure that your trash fit into a, a little jar. And I think and we're starting to come to this place where it's not about that. It's not about being perfect with it. It's, it's really about just doing the best that you can in our system that doesn't make it easy. And yeah, I think that's what I'm most excited about and what I, what we're starting to see and what I'm very excited to be seeing. I love that. I'm so glad you brought up that stupid little jar. Cause that's like the worst thing that could have happened to zero waste. I agree. <laughs> Seriously. Um, but yeah, and you'll never be perfect. And that's the thing. And, and Carrie and Libby have really mentioned that because we don't live in a system that allows us to be able to be perfect. We live in a system that was designed for things to be purchased, bought, and thrown away, not in a circular system. So I always try to remember to find my people too, that it's not you, it's the system. Um, so remember that and just keep trying, keep doing what you can. I'm also going to note um, for those who are in Boulder and Colorado and Boulder and Denver, um, check out Repeater. It is a new program that is being used for takeout items at restaurants. So if you can't reuse your own items for takeout, Repeater is giving access to certain restaurants to use a reusable takeout container. Um, so excuse me, support those restaurants that are using that service because um, it's an amazing service and we want more restaurants using it. Um, also for those in Denver, watch for the expanded recycling services bill that's going to be coming up on the ballot this year. It is measures to get expanded recycling within the city of Denver. Sorry, Carolyn, I know it's not gonna hit Thornton. I feel your pain. I lived in Thornton for three years and I know your pain. So, um, but hopefully we can get expanded in Denver and then push our state legislators to expand throughout the state. Um, we need to push for that legislation coming up in 2022. So um, you'll always hear me say vote, vote, vote. Um, it's really important that we put people in positions that are going to, to do the things that we're asking them to do. So um, I will get off that soapbox. I want to say so much thank you to Carrie and Libby. Please help me give them a round of applause for this incredible information that you provided today. Um, greatly appreciate it. As a thank you from Women in Sustainability, we'll be planting two trees in each of your names through our partnership with One Tree Planted. Um, you'll receive a certificate from us later today with your trees. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you for everybody for being here today. Thanks for interacting. It always just makes it so much more fun and really appreciate all this great insight. Um, it's been such a wonderful afternoon spending with you. The sun's out, enjoy it. The cold has moved on. Have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. We'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you.